success of this trip depends on Simon. <gasps> Jesus gave her healing and joy, but he hasn't given that to me. I won't be in your way for long. Have faith, Simon. Faith isn't my problem. I think I was a mistake. What have we here? My friends, you seem upset. You want to dilute our faith. Take your followers back west where you belong. We didn't come here to cause trouble. Well, it would appear that trouble has found us. What is stirring in your hearts in the middle of such division and unrest is Father God being revealed to you. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. We're out of food. They're out of food. Can you bring me anything? Five loaves of bread and two fish. This feels familiar. Let's eat! <laughs> Oh, Jordan, it is so good to check back in with you again. As we uh, talked about before we got started here, I had a chance to sit down with you a couple of months ago, right before season three began. And I just feel like so much has happened since then. And I knew when we left in our conversation, I knew that something big was happening with your storyline. We knew that there was this kind of come to Jesus moment but I don't think, I'm curious if you really realized how big and a powerful moment this was where your character really tackles probably life's, one of life's most difficult questions, I think, when it comes to asking God and Jesus, why me, why not others, why others and not me? Tell me yeah. about how you're processing all of this. I mean, I knew when I first read it that it was, it resonated with me on a, a very deep level. Um, but I, and, and I knew that it, it had the potential to do that for others. Uh, but there was a little bit of, of pressure and, and, uh, anxiety leading up to it because I wanted to do it justice and I wanted to do justice to the, for, for the entire, uh, disabled community and just people in general who have felt, um, insecure or like they're not good enough. Um, so there was that weight, but, uh, I, when we last spoke, I hadn't shot that scene yet. So there was still a little bit of the unknown. I wasn't sure how it was going to turn out. I wasn't sure if I'd be able to get to that place emotionally that day. Um, and uh, so, yeah, it was a little scary, but uh, exciting because, you know, as an actor, you, you hope for those, those kind of roles and scenes and moments and uh, challenges and, I'm just I'm so pleased with how it turned out and with the the response. It's been uh, overwhelming in all of the the best ways. I'm a part of some of those, um, you know, groups because the fan base, of course, for The Chosen is just so huge. And to read people's stories and how they related to that, I mean, it's got to it's it's got to be pretty touching for you. And again, I, I think you nailed it. I think you nailed that scene. Uh, I, I don't know if you could have done any better. Thank you so much. I mean, yeah, in the same way that that scene has helped other people feel less alone. Just people sharing their stories with me has helped me feel less alone as well. So uh, keep your your stories coming. And uh, yeah, I, I love all of the messages and emails that I've been getting. All right, let's talk about the big grand finale here for season three, coming to theaters. Uh, Cause you actually, did you get a chance to watch the beginning of season three in theaters? Were you able to, I thought I saw that, yeah. Yes, yeah, so I got to go to the premiere in Atlanta, which was one of the craziest moments of my life. And then uh, my, my mom rented out a theater with our whole family, all of our friends, and we went and saw it again. Um, so yes, I can't wait to see the finale as well in theaters. Well, I wanted to bring that up because there is something I had a chance to watch it uh, in theaters as well. And there is something so special, I think, about watching it with other people, getting that first time reaction. Um, you know, certainly if people are seeing it in the, the theater, most people have watched a little bit of the show. But I think this is a great, from what I can tell, even if you haven't seen any episode of it, I still think this is a good one to bring friends too. I yeah. feel like the feeding of the 5,000 is a, you know, somewhat well-known story. I know this is very close to Dallas Jenkins's heart and kind of the motivation of what it is for the chosen, but I think this is a good one to even bring friends that may be just now experiencing it for the first time. Sure. I mean, the, the finale, like I love the first two episodes of season three, um, but they're very intimate uh, episodes in terms of the scale. You know, it's a lot of one-on-one -on -one conversations and intimate moments and kind of setting up storylines for the rest of the season. Um, episodes seven and eight are easily our most cinematic episodes we've ever done. Um, they're the most uh, 
deserving and and uh, they demand to be seen uh, in a theater on the biggest screen possible with an audience. Uh, and yeah, I agree. People that haven't even seen the show, I think, would enjoy it because it, it truly is a cinematic experience. These last two episodes, and uh, I think even while we were shooting these episodes, I remember me and my castmates saying that these are the episodes that will get the chosen on the map for people and like secular audiences that haven't even heard of it. This is the, these are the episodes that people are going to be like, Oh wow, this is, you know, legitimate. This is on the same scale as, and the same quality as, you know, any, any other movie, any other blockbuster that you go see in theaters. Um, so uh, yeah, people are just going to be blown away by, by seven and eight. You know, what's interesting uh, that I w wanted to bring up with you is uh, my oldest is 10 and she has now, um, I'm starting going back with season one. It's really, and Dallas, I know, had to to address this because there are some sensitive topics. I want to make sure families know that maybe they should watch them first, you know, to if they're going to bring up some of these com conversations with the kids. But kids, I don't even think the team realized behind The Chosen how this was going to impact, I mean, young, at a young age. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. I've had... Uh more children than I, I anticipated that have come up to me in public or at events that have been so excited to see, you know, me and my castmates. And it's a really cool feeling because I'm a father as well. I've, my oldest is seven and I've got two others. They're four and two. And um, they like, you know, when they're that young, their attention pan spans are kind of short, but they still get into the chosen and, and really, especially the, the episode with Jesus and the children in, in season one. Um, but even other episodes, like they, they really enjoy watching it and, uh, even the scenes that their dad's not in. So it's, uh, it's a special show, you know, to reach so many different types of people in different age groups. My biggest takeaway after the time that I got a chance to spend with you and a lot of the other cast members, um, and it's, you know, the best thing about this show is it gets people talking about the Bible and it gets people asking questions. You guys admit you don't have all the answers. You're not perfect, right? But it gets people talking. And I think that's what the uh, the beauty of this show is. So as we get ready to wrap up here, though, what is your message as we kind of final, you know, wrap up season three? I'm going to be so sad. I'm going to be missing. I'm like, what am I going to do Sunday nights now? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So there, you know, I think that the final message is again, go see the season finale of season three in theaters, bring people, even if they haven't seen the show, they're going to enjoy it. Uh, it's, it's our biggest episodes yet. Um, but also now that we've got this new set belt, we, you know, the, the, gap in between seasons shouldn't be as long moving forward so it shouldn't be too much longer before you get some new chosen content yeah and then how can people follow you because of course i know this isn't the only project you are working on uh but where would you you have a uh, fantastic podcast as well so tell people how can they can follow along with what you're doing thanks well uh, i also wanted to mention you can go to fathomevents.com mm -hmm. to get your tickets for the chosen um, but I'm on, you know, all social media platforms at the Jordan Ross and my podcast is what's your limp. Um, and you can find that on all social media platforms as well. Oh, well, again, such an honor. Congratulations on such a successful season three. I know it was a lot of pressure, but we cannot wait for season four. So we're going to be, uh, again, paying close attention on more details. Hopefully they'll be released soon as well. But uh, all right, let's pack out these theaters. Yes, let's do. Thank you so much. All right. Good to see you again. Good seeing you too. We're out of food. They're out of food. Can you bring me anything? Five loaves of bread and two fish. This feels familiar. Let's eat! Yeah!